talks about Pauli transform matrix representation. Yes, it is this Pauli, and these are the matrices I'm talking about. I once saw that people consider them to be the most interesting matrices. Any two by two Hermitian matrix can be written in a unique way as a linear combination of Pauli matrices, with all coefficients being real numbers. By the way, all three of the Pauli matrices can be compacted into this way. Pauli transform matrix representation is usually used in tomography. Quantum process is often assumed to be a complete positive trace preserving map. It is convenient to use Pauli transform matrix representation. In this formalism, it contains only real element and provides a simple way to see whether the Pauli operator is trace preserving or whether the process is union. For Clifford operation, there is exactly one non zero element in each row and column with unit magnitude. And for a composite map, it is simply the matrix product of the individual Pauli transform matrices. In my research introduced in a previous video, I use this formalism to characterize and mitigate state preparation and measurement errors. It gave me a comprehensive knowledge of the errors and provide a convenient way. I'll show you now. For an initial state, it can be represented as a real column vector. Sigma are the Pauli matrices. We know that the density matrix of a quantum state can be written as this formalism stretches a density matrix into a clean column vector where elements are blocks vector. Similarly, measurement operator can be written as a real row vector and we mainly measure in Pauli basis. So in my research, the initial states I used can be written as the measurements. Neat. You may ask why I use this formalism. Usually when we qualify an arrow of the distance of two states, we use fidelity. It is simple and clear. Why we took trouble to use more complicated things? Think about this. If we calculate the fidelity between ground state and the superposition of ground state and excited state, I mean one pole state, we get this. However, if we calculate the fidelity between ground state with any pole state, we get exactly the same number. If the pole state here means an arrow, even though we have the arrow in different direction, we get exactly the same thing. Just one number. This makes fidelity not good for error mitigation. It could be very good at qualifying a quantum device or quantum gate, but not suitable when we need detailed error information. That's where other methods come in. With this formalism, it kind of takes pictures for all sides of the block sphere. So you have a comprehensive idea of the arrow model.